Life in Japan. My name is Ernest Kyung. This has been my first year living in Tokyo. So here is my 2019 review. When I look back, I can't believe I've been here for almost one year now. What an exciting year this has been. It has also been, by far, the fastest year ever. 2019 came and went by just like that. And I don't know if that's because time goes by faster as we get older, or it's because life in Japan and in the city moves super fast. So much has happened this year. I traveled to some new places that I probably wouldn't have gone to if I wasn't living in Japan. So many friends came to Tokyo and I was really lucky I had the chance to catch up with so many friends from around the world. Some people I haven't seen in years. So many of you traveled to Tokyo at one point in time, there was someone in town every week. One of my biggest undertakings in 2019 was starting this YouTube channel and making videos. Now, before the year is over, one thing I always like to do at the end of each year is to do a year-end review and look back and reflect. I look at both my short-term and long-term goals, from personal to professional, from financial to fitness. I look at the wins, what was successful, along with the gains and the losses. I look at what are the things I should focus more on and what are the things I need to stop doing. This has been something I've been doing every year since 2015 and has worked out pretty well for me. So this year, I thought I'd do something special and make this 2019 year-end review. Here it is, so let's get started. I moved to Japan on December 30, 2018 and I landed in Tokyo exactly on New Year's Eve. It was kind of an awkward time because it was during the year-end winter break where many businesses and shops shut down. I moved into a share house and lived there for about four months with over a dozen of other people from all walks of life. This is where I ended up making some good friends and it was the first time I did something like this and it was the closest thing to having roommates. While I was living there, I was going around looking at places to live. I ended up finding a place with my own space and moved out during spring, which apparently wasn't the best time to be moving because that's when many people in the city relocate in preparation for the new school year. So the supply and demand for places isn't the best. I learned the upfront cost of renting a place in Japan is very, very expensive because of all the different fees and depending on the place and your situation, it can cost up to four to six times month's rent at the start. Yes, I'm still a little upset about it. I went to the Google Japan office in Roppongi for a work meeting with YouTube. This was my first time going inside the Mori Tower and I felt like, wow, here I am in midtown Tokyo inside this landmark building. I got to check out some of their cool office spaces, facilities, and I learned how big the YouTube truly is. At the end of April, I watched Avengers Endgame on opening night in Tokyo. Maybe it was the hype, but this had to be one of the most highly anticipated movies I was waiting for. I don't think I've waited for a movie like this, and this was the third movie I've watched in Japan. Now the theater I wanted to go to only sold tickets in advance three days before a movie is officially released. When tickets were finally on sale, I was so excited that I bought tickets for the wrong theater. Apparently in Japan, when I read the rules after, theaters don't typically issue refunds. Luckily, I went directly to the theater, spoke with the staff, and tried explaining in Japanese what happened, and they were able to resolve everything. Nothing beats the level of Japanese customer service and hospitality. My dad came to visit and stayed with me during Golden Week. We spent time going around the city, checking out different places, and we even went to a limited time Studio Ghibli exhibition. Also during Golden Week, my good friend Matthew Baxter from Super Cheap Guides came to Tokyo and we made our very first video together where we talk about his guidebooks and traveling in Japan. This was the first video featuring a special guest and I learned it can be very rewarding and fun making a video with other creators. I also learned more about why he started writing travel guides, going into self-publishing, and how he wanted to help people travel on the cheap by sharing his knowledge and experiences. Shortly after, I had a work trip and traveled to Taiwan 
where I followed a production team and I learned how high quality production and professional video content is captured for the first time. I caught up with some friends in Taipei and I went down to Kaohsiung for the first time in southern Taiwan. I devoured a lot of Taiwanese shaved ice and consumed many bubble teas over a span of several days. It was definitely one of the more exciting business trips I've had. The weather in June was still delightful and now that I live in Tokyo, I thought it would be nice to check out one of these amazing exhibitions in the city. I went to Team Lab Planets, a digital art exhibition in Toyosu out in the Tokyo Bay Area. I enjoyed it so much that I ended up making a video about it. So if you're coming to Tokyo in 2020, I highly recommend checking it out. This was my first summer in Japan where I experienced one of the most humid, unpleasant, and uncomfortable summers I have ever felt. Once the rainy season was over in July, the humidity is turned on like a switch and it hits you hard. I remember always having to turn on the aircon. Even waking up in the mornings, it would already be 28 to 30 degrees at 8 a.m. It was so bad that I made a video about it to warn people not to come to Japan during the summertime. I'm sure we'll survive somehow, but I can't even imagine how hot and unbearable it'll be during the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Despite the heat and humidity, I embraced the summer fully and went to check out a Japanese fireworks festival for the first time. I learned how magnificent and long these shows actually last. During the summer break, or Obon Yasumi in August, I took a quick trip down to Osaka and traveled like a local buying a Shinkansen ticket from Tokyo to Shin Osaka Station. In Osaka, I caught up with a friend, tried out some local foods, and ate some of the best food ever in this whole entire year. It was better than anything I've eaten so far living in Tokyo for almost one year. In Osaka, I also tried out a local curry spot my good friend recommended. And yes, I even made a video about it. Osaka is definitely the place to get some good food in Japan without breaking the bank. In September, one of my best friends who I haven't seen in such a long time came to visit me in Tokyo for a short trip. We spent the weekend going out and about in the city, exploring western Tokyo, going to places like Kichijoji, Koenji, Nakano, Shinjuku, and walking around the Tokyo Bay Area. It was definitely one of the best and most adventurous weekends I've had. It also reminded me years ago when we used to travel around Japan together. It's always nice that friendships can pick up where they were left off like it was just yesterday. My mom came to visit me in late September. We went down to Enoshima in the Shonan area. Even though we've traveled in Tokyo many times, she's actually never been to Enoshima, so it was the perfect spot for a day trip. Afterwards, we took a short flight and went to Busan in South Korea. I haven't been back in Korea in so long, and it was amazing visiting Busan for the first time. Spending a few days in the beautiful city, eating some of that good Korean food, and checking out some of the best nature spots just outside of the city. Busan was actually on my travel list for a long time, so I'm glad I finally got to visit this year. But while I was there, I experienced my first typhoon in Korea. I went to Saitama for a work event and got to see the NBA Japan Open Games with some of the best seats watching the champs play against the Houston Rockets. This was my first time watching a sporting event in Japan. The last time there was an NBA game in Japan was in 2003. 2019 is the year when my hometown won the NBA championships for the first time. Seeing the Toronto Raptors play in Japan was an extraordinary experience, something I wouldn't have imagined, and when I look back, I'm super thankful for getting this wonderful opportunity. Shortly after, I experienced not one, but my second typhoon this year. So I made a video and documented my experiences throughout Typhoon Hagibis over three days. I went to Shibuya Scramble Square, the new landmark building that officially opened their doors on November 1st, 2019. I remembered it was a beautiful day, the weather was perfect, nothing but clear blue skies. The views were spectacular. Seeing the city like this, sometimes I still can't believe I'm actually here in Tokyo. It's a constant reminder to appreciate the good things and the good people in life, to show gratitude and be thankful each day, and to not take this wonderful opportunity for granted. I am truly lucky to be in Tokyo. There are days when it's so easy to forget or to lose sight of these things, getting caught up in the daily routine. So it's important to take a step back, to be present, enjoy the moment, and to soak it all in. I could spend hours just gazing upon this beautiful city. And to top it all off, I took a trip down under and went to Australia for the first time in the end of November. 
Now, Australia was never on my immediate list of places to go to because it always seemed so far off in the distance from Canada. But I'm glad I went. I spent about eight days with just the backpack going to Keynes, Melbourne, and Sydney. I went snorkeling, scuba diving, explored a rainforest, and made some new friends with the locals. What I loved most was the pace of life in Australia, and Australians were just so friendly, helpful, and easygoing. It reminded me back home in Canada, the multiculturalism, the different mix of ethnicities, cultures, hearing English as the common language, and it made me miss Western, Thai, and Vietnamese food. I'll share more details about that trip as I'll be working on a travel vlog series about Australia next, so keep an eye out for those videos. This has been a year filled with lots of change and many new experiences. I'm happy I made this year-end review video to look back on, because if I don't, after a few years in Japan, things are going to get blurred out. Now, the question I get asked the most is, how long are you going to stay in Japan? Now, that's not an easy question, but it is something I think about often. For the time being, I do enjoy living in Tokyo and life in Japan. This is something I dreamed of, this is something I worked for, and this is something I really wanted to do for a long time. So I do want to keep living here. So for the foreseeable future, I do see myself in Tokyo. Because one year just isn't enough, and it went by just like that. So, to the friends coming to Japan in 2020, I look forward to seeing you guys and catching up. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for more quality content about life in Japan and follow this journey. Be sure to comment down below. How was 2019 for you guys? What were some of your big wins and best moments? And what do you guys have planned for in 2020? And with that, happy holidays. Happy New Year. I wish you all the best in 2020 and I'll see you guys in the next video in the next year. Peace.